Cool. Welcome to the Wimbledon Art Fair and Wimbledon Art Studios. This afternoon, we're talking to Robert. Robert is the fantastic artist of these amazing works. And we're in your studio at Wimbledon Art Studios at the moment. And you spend most of your time here creating these astounding artworks. Your artworks range from creating amazing landscape uh, landscape paintings yeah. of inspired by the Amazon rainforest and that come from New Zealand and Australia. But your artworks also extend onto portraits of famous people and celebrities. Can you talk to us about the contrast between how you create these works? Well, it's a difficult subject actually. <laughs> Uh, I, I've started I, I, with a difficult yeah, question. It is the most, it's, yeah. it's the one thing I've been struggling with for a long time. I spent a, many years doing portraiture of iconic figures, and they were they were easy to come by. If you look a lot, uh, look around, we've got Adele, we've got Andy Warhol, we've got uh, Ray Charles, and <laughs> um, Amy Winehouse, and all of these people I've always admired. I've like, admired their music, and it was easy to work. With them, I would normally spend ooh, a few days on each one, and I'd have their music going on in the studio, and it was a, it was a nice time. I looked forward. Well, you've to really it. managed to powerfully encompass their figure, their presence, and it feels so articulate to have these amazing portraits yeah. around you. You can really feel the essence of the individuals themselves. You also work with colors, and these are all painted. Yeah. I, will, I was pretty sure they were a screen print, but they're no. paintings, which are amazing because the brush strokes just aren't there. How do you feel from going from black and white, which is also known as grisaille, to using colors within your portraits? Well, in fact, I went the other way. Okay. I, I started using colors, then I decided um, and these are done by, they are, they are a form of screen print in that they're done by um, airbrush and spray paint. Often, right, okay. From an aerosol. Uh, not in this studio, we don't use aerosols here because it's <laughs> basically poisonous and people would be. <laughs> you, need, yeah, you need more keep, skylights, you need to go onto the roof. Over. Yeah, we need more, more airflow. But, um, so that, but I decided that I really wanted to go more um, photo reel and go back to my roots as a photographer. So I, I've moved away from, from those. And if you, if you look, you can see this would be Amy Winehouse, which is probably about a three-year-old painting. And a new one that was painted very recently, be, well, yep, this one here, <laughs> which is a completely different um, style. Yes, absolutely. Uh, was, with that one, you've got the frame as part of the painting itself, yeah. which is such an interesting aspect you've got within your paintings. Yeah. How well, did you go about deciding that? Uh, that's a good idea. Wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> good, it's a good, great idea. It's a very good question because <laughs> I, was, I was given the frame. If we go over I, here, then yeah. yes. So, so originally the I, was, I was given the frame as a, as a, 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 sort of a gift by an, another artist. And I thought, well, what am I going to do with that? And somebody else came up with the idea of oh, stick, in a, <laughs> stick in a portrait and just spread it out like <laughs> over, the, over the frame. And I've seen it done in the past. Uh, it's a very modern approach, I think. And, and we see it in, the, in shop windows. And Absolutely. But it's such a powerful it. approach because it is. within art itself, we have such a conformed mindset of the yeah. painting belongs with inside the frame. Your artwork goes beyond the frame, which is such a powerful thing, I think. Really, yeah. really elaborates your artwork and pushes it to a new degree in strength. But you go from these portraits to landscape artworks as well, which is quite yeah. an interesting approach because usually one artist sticks with one subject that they use. How did you go about going from portraits and landscapes? Well, another <laughs> difficult question. It was actually uh, inspired by a holiday in Amsterdam, which led me to paint buildings over water, over the canals, which didn't really work out well. So I added, I added plants. And if you look at this painting here, it's one of a, a view across a, a canal to three. And if you look at the, the buildings, they're all slightly wonky. They're all a little bit out of... Out oh, of, well, that's very Amsterdamish, uh, yes. isn't it? Because I went during the summer. Everything's and, uh, shifting and noticed, moving. They almost seem like they're slanting yeah. over into the water. But I, I felt that the, the painting itself wasn't working. And it, and it needs to work. It needs to, to earn its living. So um, I painted it with um, ivy growing all the way through it. And it brought it alive. It does. The difficulty is, of course, if somebody from Amsterdam comes along <laughs> and says, I That's thought I know that those buildings, but 
they don't allow um, they don't allow ivy to grow over it. No, yes. I said no. But this is so. This is like a. This is from the ivy is from my imagination. The how the the um, the buildings are real. So, do you find that actually encompassing more nature within your artworks, from man-made to having nature and Mother Earth within them, actually elaborates and creates more of a story within your artworks? Because you mentioned with your landscapes uh, that you've done, inspired by the Amazon rainforest, how do you feel that connects within your works? It it connects very gradually. It went from Amsterdam to Wimbledon Common, which I've been to <laughs> regularly. Uh, and they do have a couple of lakes, Queensmere Lake. And then eventually it needed to, to be deeper. It needed to be more, I needed to take it more seriously. Uh, we'd already been to Daintree Forest, so we had all of the photographic evidence on my, on my camera. So we, we used the inspiration from that. And a th so for instance, this would be part of Daintree Forest, but it's taken from about five or six different photographs. So you merge them together to create a composition that is of your own aspect. Yeah, in my, in, in my head, I'd have them scattered around and I would use bits of one and I'd say, oh, and then I could do some of this and do that. So. If you tried to find this anywhere, you'd never find it. It doesn't Absolutely. exist. Absolutely. The only but place it, it really in. exists is is in my head. And the same goes with that one. Well, it's just just a yeah, riverside <laughs> Uh, scene. That's um, absolutely yeah. amazing. So well, it, yes. A, I was really drawn into your landscape paintings that you did, especially this one, because I'm from Brisbane, Queensland, and this right. is just up north of Cairns, isn't it? It Which is. Which is where you came up with the it's idea a for fair it. It's way north of Cairns, well, a fair way north of Brisbane absolutely, if you wanted to yeah. drive it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a wonderful uh, piece of the environment. It's got, I mean, I would love to have had a, 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 an emu. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, we couldn't. Uh, yeah, wildlife. I think the painting works perfectly. Wildlife isn't my thing, unfortunately. It, it captures the stillness yet vibrancy yeah. of the art, uh, of the landscape itself. Mm -hmm. And I think your artworks are absolutely amazing. And I wish you the best of luck for this evening. So thank you very much for having a conversation with us. And no problem. Thank you very much. I wish you the You're best welcome. of luck. Cheers. Come, come back anytime.